Um, before we start, a couple of things. One is, of course, the um, antitrust policy of the Linux Foundation, which we follow. Um, so everybody has to follow that policy wherever you are, depending on your jurisdiction. The other is the um, fact that um, we respect each other. Even when we are disagreeing, we are not going to be, uh, we are not going to be disrespectful to each other. That's the, these are the only two requirements. And I have to also say that a lot of the material that I have in this, um, was heard by the people who um, came to this um, came to this um, for the identity um, working group presentation, and I think it is Sandy and uh, Alfonso who were there. Um, so forgive me if I repeat some of that stuff, uh, especially the the definition and everything around uh, the, uh, the, metaphor, the metaverse and what it means for us. I'm going to um, share my screen and uh, I have to, you have to tell me whether you can see it or not. Um, just a second. You can see this uh, screen, right? Thank you. Yes. Wonderful. Um, Hello. Hi. Elena, how are you? Um, just give me a second. Uh, because I'm getting uh, interrupted by somebody. Um, anyway, I'll uh, start with the presentation. So the rough shape is this, that we are going to talk about what is uh, the metaverse and how does it differ from a regular user interface and what are the possibilities, especially in the middle of crypto winter, it is get good to remind ourselves uh, why we are doing all this. Um, because as you no doubt know, things change, um, paradigm shifts happen, but slowly. Uh, nobody can predict the true arc of the transformation. We have all, we, we have all been working on this, uh, these subjects for a long time, especially blockchain, cryptocurrency, and uh, the higher constructs on top of it, which are basically the, uh, the apps just like the web two apps like facebook and others this is going to be uh, you know these apps appear on the higher levels layers of the ecosystem but for the higher layers to work we have to have either very solid low layers or uh, rapid uh, changes in the lower layers to support uh, this kind of, you know, the, the acts that are coming about. So before, um, before we start, you know, we, it, this is a rough agenda, but it's not uh, going to be followed strictly. Um, 
Before we start, we uh, have to look at the look at the history of what happened. Uh, the earlier slide that I had had misidentified the first person. His name is Emmanuel Goldberg. This is in 1925 to 32. Um, for, uh, he basically was able to compress data into a very small area, like a micro dot, which is a purely analog technology, uh, but it made it possible to compress entire libraries, entire ecosystems of knowledge into very a small area that can be carried around by a person which is uh, similar to the situation we have, which obviously the content producers are scattered all over the place and we can access that information. Here, it's more about possession of that uh, in a very small uh, area, uh, microdoc. Um, Emmanuel Goldberg, um, proposed something called a statistical machine, which is obviously related to the um, to the universe contained in the uh, in the uh, in these micro dots. It becomes very difficult to search that, and as you can imagine, the um, rise of uh, the search engines technology has. Um, uh, demonstrated in the Web2 world, anyway, that the power of that paradigm and everybody relies on um, the search engine. And if you think about the second one, which is the Memex, uh, and uh, that was uh, proposed by Vannevar Bush in, in the 30s or 40s, then we have a bunch of people who are, um, you can say novelists or theorists. Most of the ideas in the, in number three, four, five, and six um, have been, I, you know, have been realized in the games uh, like uh, the Neil Stephenson's, uh, uh, you know, coinage of metaverse in the snow crash has been realized to a certain extent in the in the gaming world. But the main thing to uh, concentrate on there is most of these people considered the metaverse or any kind of uh, immersive hyper-reality a bad thing, which means it would turn people into couch potatoes or into uh, somebody who was under the control of uh, some super organism or someone, uh, you know, the world was not a good world. But as we know, the any idea like blockchain or metaverse is a double-edged sword. It has good and bad aspects. Um, the bad aspects are things like, you know, total immersion, in this world will obviously be not good for your mental health uh, and would allow control uh, to pass from a personal level to some other, uh, you know, of the collective. And uh, it becomes more and more difficult to ex express a personal uh, viewpoint opinion or something you build um, stand out in the sea of 
evenness or a sea of you know so many creators uh, so chance against plays a big role in the choice of who who's to come um the number seven fortnite roblox minecraft microsoft uh, flight simulator these are the these are the ways in which we have experienced the metaverse today and uh, the thesis in many um, of the uh, of the later visions for the metaverse uh, goes much beyond games games of course are the sort of uh, foundational uh, use case for the metaverse but uh, already we see uh, certain aspects of markets and identity uh, playing their part in getting the metaverse to the next level whether it will reach the next level or not is a um, is a question but it is certainly possible to to say that just like in the older transformations one the pace of change cannot be predicted you know, sometimes it takes years but then the the whole thing snowballs into a uh, you know like nobody could have predicted the rise of social media back in the 90s nobody could have predicted amazon nobody could have predicted uh, you know platforms like that uh, so the coming universe or or, or in, in in this case since we are hyperledger i would say the hyperverse um, is also unknown it's an unknown country but we know certain things are happening uh, that is a combination of a uh, engaging hyper three-dimensional world combined with presence not only of yourself but of others a, a simultaneously a persistent world that will um, you know is either based on the real world or based on somebody's imagination or a combination of the two um, so that's why the the last uh, item here planet labs is a very interesting uh, company that was started by a nasa uh, ex-employee uh, is a founder it's been around for about 10 years and they've been um, they have been launching swarms of satellites that map the earth not just once not it's not google earth it is constantly cir circling the globe and sending a dynamic image of the world so you can see how the world is transformed so my contention is that that is a public benefit corporation which means that a lot of the data that they have can be downloaded for free and it can be used in constructing your own uh, let's say hybrid universe which is very similar to the real universe but at the same time can be um, uh, can you know it can be rooted in reality but at the same time not uh, so from here i switch to uh, the definition you know which we already went over a, uh, a little bit that is a realism to cause psychological and emotional immersion the psychological and emotional part is very important uh, last time when I presented it, somebody said, um, you know, this is nothing but 
a uh, UI and he also called it a meta curse, not a metaverse. Um, the point is, you know, it, it, is, it is a UI and the UI is all we have to interact with the world, even the real world, because it is mediated by perception. Uh, my, you know, my eyes, my taste, my hearing, my touch, uh, all of that is what I use to interact with the real world. And that's, that's how humans traditionally have. And obviously to create a immersive reality, you have to use each one of these perceptions to create either an alternative world or an overlay on this world uh, that enhances the experience or gives you more information. Um, and the other thing is ubiquity that is accessible through all existing digital devices and from anywhere. Uh, interoperability, which we will touch upon later, and scalability, which uh, talks about the, uh, you know, right now in massive uh, games uh, in the um, Battle Royale or whatever, whatever they call it in uh, Fortnite, only about 100 or 200 people participate. But what if the entire planet showed up in one of these uh, so-called metaverses obviously it'll crash not you know it cannot scale to that present uh, to to what they think is the definition of the me the metaverse so obviously the metaverse is not there yet according to the ideal definition but parts of it are there um, and uh, in each one of these um, definitions, I have highlighted just the part that deals with the economic or commercial interests and payments, um, but they pretty much agree on everything else, which is that it's an immersive world that where people interact, um, and uh, it is persistent. That means if I go to sleep and come back and enter the metaverse again, all the items that I had collected would remain. That is persistent across identity, but it's also persistent uh, I mean, pers persistent across time for a single individual and also persistent across space. That means I can um, go to worlds, go to areas that I've never been to where other people have been and I will have similar, um, let us say, visual and auditory experience as they had. So that is a persistent across space. Um, but in all of these, you see there's uh, two things that are uh, constant. One is, of course, the um, a notion of identity and a notion of value that is attached to the identity, which means property, basically a uh, a view of property. And then once you have these two, then property can be uh, can be sold to others, can be lent, can be um, um, aggregated between several people, and then uh, you can have other financial DeFi sort of, sort of agreements, arrangements on top of it. Uh, that will take it to a uh, market level. So these are the developments that everybody's um, working on, 
but obviously we are far from far from having realized all of those and by the way towards the end i'm going to have a um um a q and a at least 10 15 minutes so that uh you can ask your questions but you can also uh, put in any questions on uh, the chat. Uh, so one of the ways in which uh, these kind of um, collectives, collections are uh, looked at is through a, uh, a negation. That means neti neti, which is basically a concept in Advaita, which is a sort of trying to reach uh, the concept of uh, Atman, the self or the, uncon the universal unconscious. So it is by saying, oh, it is not this, it is not this, it is not this. Then what is left after all those negations are done uh, is an approach to saying it is this or it is, you know, it's, it's a, uh, spreads over everything. So in that sense, it says it is not a virtual world, it is not a virtual space, it is not virtual reality, it is not a digital and virtual uh, economy, it is not a game, it is not a virtual theme park or Disneyland, it is not a, a new app store, it is not a, a user-generated content platform. Um, so when we come to this user-generated uh, content uh, bit, you can see that some elements of a marketplace can be formed there. I mean, it is not just companies selling to you, but also uh, you're generating content, which you can then monetize. Um, you can generate stuff so everybody, be you know, you can choose to become a creator. Uh, that was unleashed a little bit during the web two days, but in this, uh, uh, in the metaverse, it's felt that that would become much more prevalent. Uh, the two visions, of course, we, we have heard about uh, before, which is one is augmented reality, which is uh, you have a lens, or a something that you look through that shows you the real world, but at the same time, that real world is overlaid with uh, with data that makes you, uh, you know, actually make sense of the real world. For example, I look at a tree. Instead of just the tree. I'm also presented with a way to look at what kind of tree it is, what is the cycle, uh, you know, is it a deciduous tree, what kind of flowers does it have, uh, you know, you can watch, you can have rich content overlaid on the on the real world. The other is, of course, virtual reality, which is uh, everything is obscured. You are wearing a uh, space helmet and you cannot see the real world, but you are fully in a virtual or 3D world. And then you have a hybrid. So we come to this uh, slide, which was presented before, also in the earlier, uh, you know, almost all the slides till this one or even later i uh, have been in the first presentation on the identity working group but here i can identify the elements of a market so that is a digital uh, currency there is a marketplace or a digital commerce where i can advertise or prices so a marketplace is basically where you can discover discover uh, something uh, of value and not only can you discover it, discover also means somebody's offering it for sale. So there's a price attached to it. 
Uh, then you have a non-fungible tokens, which are obviously the, the lifeblood of uh, the metaverse because it is uh, just like us, uh, these tokens are unique, but like we work for money, which becomes a fungible token, the non-fungibility of our effort, our talent gets translated into a, a fungible token because then we can engage in exchange with others. Uh, we can uh, look at the way in which this non-fungible tokens are in a spectrum between uh, individual existence as a unique object uh, on the one side as a fractionalization of that object and on the other side as a collection of such objects that would provide cash flow uh, and securitization. Um, digital assets, um, then the events, online shopping, workplace, social media, digital humans, and so on. Um, the point is it is a vast collection of various elements. This says a metaverse, not the metaverse. Uh, that is important to note because right now we only have metaverses. Metaverses that are either galaxies like uh, Roblox, which uh, the game where you can build your own game. So it is pro providing a foundational sort of uh, uh, structure where you can build your own game or in Minecraft, build your own world, uh, Roblox, build your own little worlds, or it is a fully immersive game, which is no, you know, where you cannot participate in terms of UGC other than probably creating something to be sold like a armor or a sword or something else. And all of these are controlled by usually by the ERC 1155, uh, 1155 um, standard uh, that we, money and I, use to create the wholesale, wholesale CBDC token. So that shows you the uh, interaction between um, you know, copies of unique objects and currency itself, which is which has got its own uniqueness built into it in the sense that it has, it belongs to a country. Uh, it, there is no universal currency and there are ways in which you can interchange them through a foreign exchange marketplace. So similarly, uh, the digital currency in a, uh, a native token like in Ethereum uh, is also limited to a world of Ethereum. Now I want to transform it to another world that I have to go through a blockchain bridge or some kind of a transformation uh, to create, uh, you know, to be able to transport that value from one place to another, which is basically interoperability of some sort. So, um, so what does it take uh, to take a, a metaverse and, and transform it into a component of the metaverse. So, um, where do, where do we um, you know in, in the metaverse? The, according to the EU and uh, other people, there are so many different uh, aspects that have to be looked at: competition, data protection, uh, liabilities in general, 
and how do you attach to it a identity uh, financial transactions cyber security health accessibility and inclusiveness um, and the other uh, you know which I didn't actually uh, go uh, I don't have the slide for it but the uh, metaverse itself will be a um, just like the internet it doesn't talk about a single uh, internet it talks about the internet which is every network that is connected by the tcpip protocol so in order to have a, a metaverse uh, become the metaverse we need uh, standards for value interchange, identity, and uh, interchange of uh, three-dimensional objects. Um, obviously, this is far from where we are today. Um, here, I've just listed, you know, uh, some of the areas in which the metaverse is being used uh, and uh, education, architecture, engineering and construction, real estate, that means you, you can actually build something or propose something and then um, go into it in a virtual 3D world and see where the problems are and try to uh, make changes uh, or solicit comments in the AEC part, which is architecture, engineering, and construction. And then the second part, re real estate, where you actually sell the property, sell something, uh, or rent it out. Let's say you, you want to do it on Airbnb, and you have a, uh, a metaverse representation of your property, and Airbnb has let's say millions of such properties and you can go into that uh, particular meta galaxy or whatever you want to call it and tour the different properties and be able to go inside each one and experience it and then make a choice for the real world. So this is metaverse used for real world um, activity which is a marketplace also because you are in the middle of all the different uh, rental properties and you are in a particular area where you're planning to visit and you choose one of them. Then of course the retail lifestyle uh, type uh, activities, exercise, dating, weddings, um, and of course intimately connected to that as a, uh, a sex work which uh, nobody of course talks about, but it's a big money maker. Uh, and I think there are uh, some universes opening up where you can actually uh, engage either directly or indirectly with uh, sex workers, uh, meaning in a collective uh, sense or an individual sense. Uh, then entertainment, including sports, gambling uh, and other events. So the, uh, you know, of course, fashion is a big, uh, big player in the metaverse, uh, and they are advancing, uh, advertising, and governance using uh, NFT governance tokens in a DAO type uh, setup. Uh, I'm actually a member of that city DAO setup in uh, Wyoming and uh, you basically engage in city planning with the others who are there in that metaverse. Um, so we, we already went through all this stuff uh, uh, to a certain extent. Um, the main thing that we need is a metaverse protocol uh, of some sort that covers what we're, whatever we talked about and the standards usually the you know the standards that are mentioned for a three-dimensional world 
uh, is a universal uh, theme descriptor. A uh, lot of people have adopted this. Uh, some of the biggest uh, challenges in the meta to transform a metaverse into the metaverse are the individual um, companies stranglehold on data. Uh, right now, there is a big debate or let's say a big uh, play uh, where Apple, for example, in the name of privacy has locked out, um, you know, and it's supposed to be consent driven, um, all the other companies um, and Apple themselves take like a 30% uh, cut of uh, selling games. So that economy is lopsided. There are definitely gatekeepers and they are in the way, in the, in the you know, blocking progress and uh, taking a lot of the, of whatever the metaverse is producing in terms of value for themselves. 20, 30%, I think is the, uh, for game, uh, for uh, games apps. Um, and even in the other apps like Roblox, for example, the content creators who create Roblox worlds do only get 20 or 30%. About 40% goes to the people who sell it and uh, the other goes to the platform. So the platforms are taking 20 to 40% of the value that is generated by the metaverse. Uh, there's a chat. Uh, I have... Okay, so who should be involved, uh, needed to be involved in deriving a metaverse protocol? So uh, we have, we'll have to defer that to the, towards the end. I'll, I'll, uh, I have my opinions, but, uh, you know, in a protocol sense, um, there's always a, there's always a balance between a standard development organization who will uh, specify a protocol or ad hoc protocols being born because of the scale of adoption. Like for example, ERC-20 is an Ethereum-based protocol, and but it has take, taken the world by storm for the creation of cryptocurrencies. Now, if you step back a little bit, you can see that the NFTs that are in the metaverse are being financed, let's say, or, or you can buy the NFTs using cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency is a payment rail and the NFTs are what you buy. Uh, protocol wise, the USD developed from Pixar. So uh, it, is being, it is being adopted by a lot of the game development engines or platforms. So that's why it's getting a lot of play. So again, a, an example of an ad hoc protocol growing. So I think one of the main you know, roadblocks against all this is the fact that there, were, there was no protocol that is a metaverse protocol developed organically or even from a organization like DARPA, which developed the TCP IP, which uh, underlies even the metaverse, right? Because everything is now based on the internet protocol, which is then topped by the TCP. And then of course you built uh, HTTP and others on top of it. Uh, 
so similarly, the metaverse protocol will be built on the ground, you know, on the rock of TCP IP. Uh, whether it will be then built on top of uh, HTTP, we don't know. Uh, so I'm going to the next slide. I'm trying to I'm trying to okay. So this is where the building uh, happens, and you have the uh, networks, devices, computing, virtual world engines, um, interoperability, uh, payment rails, and identity. But what is, what are we buying? Value in the metaverse, value anywhere, is but is nothing but data, right? Data is the key. Data that is um, carried around either on the blockchain or elsewhere, but pointed to by the blockchain and uh, um, secured usually with the public private key pair. How do we escape from this into a different world where that, all that stuff is there, but is seamless? Uh, so again, I have put together this uh, stack um, that in the on the top is assets, which is the, the focus of today's presentation. Um, and here I'm bringing in the various uh, elements, which is called the ABCD of the metaverse or ABCD of DeFi or wh where, wherever you want to take it. But these are the components the AI, AI, blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and DeFi, which is ABCD. Uh, I have about five more minutes, uh, and then I will uh, open it up for questions. So as we were saying, data is the representation of value. Uh, blockchain is a railroad, according to uh, these guys, Schulte, who has written a uh, paper, and it's in it's in the it's in the references section of this presentation, which will be available. Um, so, blockchain as a railroad, big da data as the cars, which I mean, you know, it's a sort of a strained analogy, but here are the uh, various markets that will arise from it. The crypto, which underpins the NFTs and uh, the NFTs overlay everything. Then you have the FinTech, InsureTech and PropTech, uh, which are the three areas. FinTech in the sense of pure financial uh, transactions, and uh, pure financial uh, experience. And here, of course, uh, the various companies that uh, make up the key players in the US and the China and China. And Schulte, uh, Schulte's book, Money Metaverse, uh, deals with a lot of uh, case studies, both in the US and in the other important market, China, where Ch in China, uh, the we were talking a little bit about the public infrastructure. They are creating something called the um, BSN, which is uh, going to be a platform where you can have multiple blockchains but they're going to have strict control over how uh, you get into it uh, in, in terms of the interoperability between the blockchains. So there is that. Now, in the US or in Europe, 
we don't have the government constructing such a public utility. Although, although in the U.S. and 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 in uh, Europe, we do have public utilities like railroads, uh, um, which are semi-governmental roads, um, and you know some other forms of infrastructure where there is a lot of coordination, like electrical grid. So similarly, these uh, constructs in the pub in in the U.S. will probably be controlled by the regulatory aspects that control how data can be held and disseminated, especially if it is going to be a GDPR type situation where you are supposed to be allowed to transport your data from one network to another network, from one platform to another platform, from one metaverse to another metaverse, creating the possibility of the metaverse. So that's how probably it's going to come about. Uh, with one more slide, I stop my presentation. Here I'm just talking about the NFT markets. This is a generic slide. The NFT stands in the middle. Then you have on the one side, fractionalization of the NFT, which creates uh, multiple fractions of the same NFT. Uh, like for example, when you want a huge apartment complex to be uh, divided into fractions and, and you as an investor can own a fraction or two or more than one fraction. That's one way of going about it. The other way is you take multiple NFTs uh, and originate a, uh, a um, sort of a securitized NFT and then do the tranches like in a regular mortgage uh, where the cash flows for different activities go into these tranches. Now we keep talking about cash flows. The cash flows have to be a fungible token, some, some sort of fungible token. Right now it is uh, the token of a, usually of a single platform, usually Ethereum, which can then subsequently be exchanged to a, uh, a fiat currency to be used in the real world. Uh, now, I talked about securitization tranches, but I haven't shown where the securitization tranches go back uh, to being sold as bonds. Similar to the fractionalization of a single NFT, each tranche is then fractionalized to be sold as bonds just like in a uh, regular, uh, you know, in a mortgage bond. So these are the references that I have, and then we have Q&A. In case you guys have any questions, uh, let's, let's talk about that. One, Ron's question, who's going to be in charge? I have kind of partially answered that. Uh, Ron, please. Thanks, Vipin, and, and uh, Paul, thanks for this presentation. I appreciate your thought leadership and all the metaverse work. And I showed up a little late, so apologies to the group. I, I guess the question I've got on the metaverse protocol, I, I kind of wanted to dive into that a little bit. And the reason I asked it was, it strikes me that to engage in a multiverse seamlessly, in other words, you, Vipin, participating in multiple metaverses seamlessly is a very different protocol than the world we come from. Think, you know, from an internet perspective where you, you referenced ERC-20, it, it, it deals with things like identity and, and true capture and ownership of your identity, et cetera. I, I'm just curious if anyone had seen kind of foundational work in, in a metaverse protocol. And I know what you're talking about, um, Vipin, from a, the perspective of how that develops, but 
I'd love someone to, to sanity check me. It seems to me a metaverse protocol would be a very, very different thing. Yeah, I mean, it is uh, by baby steps that it's going to grow, but uh, there are some interoperability work. Uh, there's some interoperability work even done in the metaverse itself. And that might grow into some kind of a metaverse protocol where you're allowed to take assets from one one game or one metaverse into another. Uh, anybody else has uh, any experience with this stuff or? Or just tell me if I'm perceiving it wrong. No, no, you, you're right that it is, um, it would enable a sort of a, a leap that is totally not commensurate with uh, the change that it will bring. Meaning if you really have a metaverse protocol that is globally adopted, then it would create, you know, in the identity part, for example, I say that the uh, uh, SSI and a uh, um, edge wallet that has credentials in it could be used uh, to transform identity. But as you know, the DID work and the SSI work about credentials is not just <clears throat> about identity, but it's on yep. a bigger, bigger level. So maybe there's something there that you can use to um, okay, so there is an exchange between Sandy and Ron. About... Well, Sandy shared an article about Meta and Microsoft kind of beginning the standards creation of the metaverse, which Sandy, thanks for that. And I suspect there are parts, some people in the world who kind of fear that Meta and Microsoft are mm -hmm. going to be doing that, but interested in other people's opinions. Yeah, uh, I'm going to stop the share here and let's continue our discussion with uh, whatever, you know, uh, I hope uh, this was useful, especially for the people who came to the older presentation on identity. Um, anyway, um, anything else uh, <clears throat> from Ron or? Hi, no, this is Paul Bohan. First yeah. time, first time uh, attending. Hi, Vivian. I, I had a question, and this has to do with with um, you know, the, and, and and I'm trying to keep things more metaverse focused. I have some other questions, but yeah, how do you address the uniqueness of representative assets and representative identities, and the real assets and real identities on which they're based? If a meta identity owns a meta asset, which is representative of real estate or a real dollar based asset and the real person dies or is otherwise incapacitated or the identity is stolen are the real assets stolen as well i'm 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 just i'm just i, I know it, it's a pretty broad question but i, I i'm still but, trying to get my hands around it okay so representation of assets uh, you mean like uh, an avatar or something right yeah yeah so let's talk let's first talk about uh about the same person going into different different worlds before we start talking about dying, which is obviously not the same person, but somebody <laughs> who's a delegate or, or who has inherited the, sure. that uh, property or whatever. So if the control of all this stuff is using some kind of a private public key pair, you know, in the same world, we understand that, right? We understand, unless, of course, yeah. uh, somebody steals it, uh, in which case there has to be a property law of some sort applying to this. Um, you know, I don't know uh, how far the regulations are going to go to detect that theft and to, uh, to, re uh, to have a property law properly enforced in, in the metaverse or in fact uh, in the cryptocurrency universe for that right. matter. 
the second is how do you transform one as one avatar which i control and now i want to take the same or similar avatar into another world the problem is uh, not all metaverses use the same way to represent uh, the three-dimensional object they don't have <coughs> the same capabilities they don't have so there can be a rough yeah. simile of one in the other for now and unless there is a both um, so how do you extinguish or how do you say okay i want to transform this um, avatar into this other uh, metaverse where i'm the same person or similar person right okay. the, the other the other possibility is that i take all my assets that are in metaverse a and take it to metaverse b or i take only part of them uh, so how do you burn those assets in metaverse a and then how do you issue them in metaverse b so right now there is you know it is all through intermediaries for cryptocurrencies for example you have the you know you have a way of transferring crypto from one blockchain to another but you mm -hmm. have intermediaries who have presence in both or you have a chain of intermediaries like in lightning or something but lightning of course interacts only with bitcoin so it's only for right. uh, interaction with the real world mm -hmm. so you know, these are all questions that are uh, extremely important and hopefully we will um, address them as time goes by. And I'm sure that there are, um, what, what is, what are these uh, chats? I think uh, the next group is already arrived on the scene and they probably ah. will kick us out. <clears throat> okay. Well, you know, it, it, it's a long question. I'll, I'll, I'll send you some questions uh, by email or whatever in, in any case. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. We can uh, engage in this as a uh, sort of a conversation. I have, I have questions about GDPR rules, by the way, because GDPR rules about basically what we'll call forgettability hmm. uh, of, 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 of assets. Yes. yes. Uh, and, and, and personally identifiable information. To what degree do we think that will apply in the metaverse? And yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, uh, the EU paper, uh, which actually has a link in, our, in my, um, in my presentation, which I will put on the, uh, on the meeting page, uh, does talk about some of these things, but obviously uh, does not, I mean, they are still not in the rulemaking phase, it's more like a research or a, um, a, a paper that is meant to be, uh, to provoke discussion, which is similar to our, uh, you know, our discussion here, because um, anyway, Nico is here and I will uh, All right. close this call and I'll post uh, the recording on the meeting page and maybe we will and from next time onwards we'll uh choose a uh, some some uh zoom that is not clashing with the next uh, <laughs> uh you know gotcha anyway i'm gonna close yeah. the meeting so that means nico will uh maybe i can i can try to transfer I think I have a host code as well, so I think I can just take it over. Okay, let's see. All right. Um, about, thank you very much. So let thank me you all. let me just uh, stop the recording. That.